Hello, and thank you for watching. Uh, this is Professor Ryan Paul, and in this video, I'm going to be giving instructions on uh, a writing assignment, writing exercise called Documenting Change. As the title suggests, this exercise is about thinking about the past, getting you to think about how things have changed in your lifetime. Now, the back in my day speech is usually something that you hear from the older generations, your parents, your grandparents, things like that. Back in my day, things were so much harder. We didn't have this or that. Uh, but things have changed rapidly in your life. And uh, it's very important to consider that because otherwise you just sort of get f uh, caught up with the, the flow of time. So thinking about the past and how things have changed, how your life has changed, um, it's not just about reflecting on what's already happened, but it's also, I think, about uh, preparing for the future and seeing how your life is organized and how your life has been transformed by what's happened to you so you can be prepared for future changes. When you think about the things that older generations often comment on, a lot of it is around technology, uh, a lot of it's around entertainment, a lot of it is around our social life and education. Uh, so things like smartphones, uh, YouTube and YouTube influencers and just streaming video in general. This is all very new, uh, relatively speaking. It, many of these things have been around most of your life, but for people who are a little bit older, uh, these are relatively recent developments. And when we were growing up, they weren't around. Mass shootings, right? That was something that's a, something that's exploded in the last 20 years or so. Dating, hookup apps, totally different way of, of relating to people and meeting people romantically than used to be. If you uh, have ever seen the movie Hot Tub Time Machine, uh, the one kid from the present day who goes back to the past and can't figure out how to get in touch with this girl. She doesn't have Facebook. She doesn't have a cell phone. What's he going to do? Deep fakes, the ability to use computers to manipulate photos and videos to make it look like, uh, for example, Nicolas Cage is playing every actor in Lord of the Rings. Um, this is a very new technology. And reality TV, right? Entertainment, a, a type of entertainment that didn't exist before. So you might start just by imagining, uh, thinking about the kinds of things that older generations find strange and frightening, the things that older generations talk about before thinking about uh, what you, what has changed in your life. I'll give myself as an example some things that have changed that I remember changing uh, in the course of my life, things that are very different now than they were when I was a kid and, and major events that, that have happened that are now historical and uh, some of them seem uh, almost quaint in the past. Uh, I remember when smoking was allowed in restaurants and even on airplanes. As insane as it sounds, people could smoke a, a cigarette uh, sitting in front of you on the airplane and you couldn't escape. I remember brick-sized portable phones that weighed two pounds. I still remember when my uh, mom and dad both got their first phones that were, you know, you could bludgeon someone to death with them. They were big enough. Um, I remember when superheroes were only for kids. The idea of superhero movies was ridiculous. Uh, there was Superman, and then there was the what, a couple Batman movies with Michael Keaton, and only the first one of that was, was really well received. So I remember when the idea of a comic book movie was ridiculous. Uh, I actually saw Michael Jackson live in concert when I was a little kid. This is uh, around the thriller Billie Jean era. Uh, I remember watching the Berlin Wall fall live on television, a major political and historical change that transformed political relationships and the, and the relationship between the United States and uh, the Soviet and will eventually be the, the former Soviet Union. I remember dial up Internet having to uh, people couldn't call. People couldn't call, get through to you on the phone when you were using the Internet because you had to use the phone line. I remember uh, eventually my parents getting a second phone line so that I could use the internet and they wouldn't have to, uh, uh, their friends would be able to call them. Floppy disks for computers, uh, that little icon that you see that, that, uh, that you press when you save a, a file. I remember when those were physical things, actual disks that you carried around um, and that you had to use to load and run programs. Computers didn't have internal memory. And I remember watching Run DMC's first video on MTV, one of the first rap videos, first time I'd ever heard rap. Um, it was a, a brand new thing. It was just exploding into the public consciousness. So all these, and you know, th these things have changed radically. Smartphones can fit in your pocket and they can do uh, anything. They're, they're more powerful than any computer that I had when I was growing up. Marvel movies dominate the, uh, the, the movie industry. Internet, you can get, lightning fast internet on your phone, watch movies streaming from satellites on your phone. Uh, all these things have just radically changed. So just an, as an example, some personal memories from my life. 
So think about what has changed in your life and some prominent categories, technology, movies, TV, music, or just entertainment in general. And that could also include professional sports, college sports, social media, and social interactions more generally. How have people, how, have it, how is uh, the way we interact with each other and the way we make friends and communicate with our friends changed? And that uh, has some overlap with dating, romance, marriage, major transformations, mentioned dating apps earlier, uh, toys and activities for kids. Are your little brothers and sisters or little cousins, uh, do they have different types of toys than you did? Are they being raised in a different way than you were? Politics, economics, some of that might be outside of your realm of immediate uh, awareness or, or immediate experience, but um, major changes in the last 20 years. How is politics different now than it was? Do you remember uh, watching the news when you were a kid, if your parents were watching it? Fashion, clothes, how do people dress differently, different sorts of hairstyles, what kinds of looks are popular? And there's uh, you know, an infinite number of other topics that one could choose. Okay, let's think about some specifics so we can think, again, generate some ideas here for what we might talk about. Uh, devices that have disappeared, things that used to be popular but now don't even exist anymore. VHS tapes. We had VHS when I was growing up, now that's a dead technology. Cassettes we had when I was growing up, that then CDs, then MP3 players, now it's all in the cloud. So are there devices that have disappeared in your lifetime? Uh, also new tech, things that, are, that have been newly invented, or sci-fi tech, things that are cutting edge, that are really mind-boggling, like 3D printers or Google Glass, things like that. What about useless tech? Um, what kind of stupid things have people invented that seem to be just a waste of resources? Things that have radically changed. Cell phones are one thing that have radically changed. It used to be you could, all you could do on them was make phone calls. Now you, they're basically little computers in your pocket. Um, things like uh, uh, appliances. Refrigerators once were very simple. Now you can buy a refrigerator that is smart enough to order your milk and have it delivered when you run out. Technology that was cutting edge but is now every day. Cell phones are another example of this. Computers are an example of this. They used to be very expensive. They used to be only a certain group of people had them. Certain types of people could afford them or even were interested in that kind of technology. Now, most people have computers. Most people have smartphones. Things you didn't know you needed. Uh, technology inventions that came out of nowhere that, that, seemed, that supplied a need that people didn't even realize. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples of this, uh, uh, perhaps something like a, a portable straw that allows you to filter out toxins, right? That's, a, that's something that people didn't really think they needed before, but now they're very popular. Or apps to help you meditate, right? People didn't know they needed something like that before, but now they do. And of course, the biggest one in technology is just the expansion of the internet. Uh, the internet's been around probably your entire life, but it's radically different than it was 10 years ago. So how has the internet expanded into new areas and how is it different? And when you're looking at these technological issues, if you choose to talk about technologies changes, important questions to ask, have they made your life easier? A lot of technology, it, we think it makes our life better, but does it necessarily make our life easier? Uh, or are there new complications that have been added? For example, having a cell phone makes it a lot harder to clock out of work. Your boss can pretty much get a hold of you anytime. You've got your work email on your phone, so if it's seven o'clock on a Saturday and you need to send an email because of some issue with your with an order that was made uh, for, from your boss, then you've got to do that. You don't you can't wait until Monday. And so, how has your life been changed or reorganized, or the lives of those around you? How have these technological changes actually transformed the way we live day to day and how we do our, our different tasks and, and uh, take care of our different obligations? Entertainment. You, you can think about entertainment, like again, TV, movies, uh, music, sports. Genres that used to be popular of music, uh, genres of, of types of TV shows, right? We go through different uh, cycles of when things are popular, different types of music, whether it's um, hard-edged music or more pop music or love, uh, dance, all these sorts of things change. Um, popular franchises, things that are popular now that, that weren't around when you were a kid or things that have radically exploded uh, from a single Iron Man movie to now the one of the biggest entertainment franchises in the world, the Marvel films. 
new styles of music or dance or uh, TV shows, any sort of new style of an entertainment product that didn't exist, that's now popular, things that have come out of obscurity. In horror movies or TV, what's scary? We go through cycles of uh, monsters, realistic uh, horror, uh, occult horror, torture, um, vampires, werewolves, zombies, right? What are the what are the bad guys that we're scared of? And you could think about any genre, right? What's what are the sexy type of people in in, in romantic movies? Who are the guys that that the girls want in romantic movies? What type of guy is that? Where are they now, right? You can think about again people or or things that have disappeared from public consciousness, popular and unpopular celebrities. Uh, some people who were very popular 20 years ago now are have disappeared or are reviled. Think about people like Bill Cosby who have been exposed as uh, horrific uh, monsters, right? So the change in, in the presence of certain people in our public consciousness, in our celebrity consciousness. And streaming videos, again, the internet. How has the internet transformed entertainment, the way it's delivered, the way we get it, the way artists uh, are able to produce and distribute their, their art? And so bigger questions to consider if you look at entertainment, things like how have tastes changed in this particular area and, and why have they changed? Do you think the quality of the media has improved or worsened? It's probably gonna be in some cases it's improved, in some cases it's wor worsened, or depending on what aspects. Certainly movies today are much uh, slicker in terms of their, sci their uh, special effects, but are they better in terms of their story? Do you think entertainment is more crude or crass than before? That's a common complaint. Everything today is so sexualized. Everything today is so violent, etc. cetera. Uh, do you think that's the case? And do you think entertainment is more diverse than before? Do we see more different types of people, whether that's race, gender, sexuality? Uh, are there more different types of stories being told? Or do you think entertainment in certain areas is becoming more restricted, more limited, more homogenized? Social life, thinking about the prevalence of social media, and which social media apps uh, people use or don't use anymore and how that has become part of how we define ourselves and, and relate to other people. There's the Tumblr crowd and there's Twitter and there's Instagram and, and they each have their own different usage uses and different communities use them in different ways. Dating and romance uh, and apps, right? That's something that's, that's arisen in the last 20 years and radically changed. Again, something that might seem normal or just part of the, the, the way the world is, depending on your age. But for people who grew up in a time before dating apps, uh, it's a completely strange phenomenon. So how has that transformed the way people interact with each other? How do you think attitudes towards difference have changed? Race, sexuality, et cetera. Are people more open, more tolerant? Are people more willing to be criticized? Uh, if someone says something insensitive or does something insensitive, are they willing to learn from that? Family life, parents and children, how have families changed? Uh, do you, again, as I mentioned earlier, are your little brothers and sisters or little cousins, are they being raised differently than you were? How do you think parents treat their children today? What are parents concerned about when it comes to their kids? And work-life balance. How much do people work? How much do people play? What do people seem to prioritize? What do you prioritize? What have you been taught to prioritize? Do you think there's any transformation or change in what people value in terms of their life? Again, some, some broad questions to consider. Are people more or, or less kind to people uh, to, and welcoming to others today? Do you think people are more tolerant or less? Does it depend on who you're talking about. Do you think social media makes us more or less lonely? Is it good for interaction? Does it help us be more social or does it restrict us? How are kids today raised differently than you were? And how is dating today different than it was for your parents? Again, just some, some broad questions, many others that you, that you could consider on this topic. Finally, politics and economics. What are the current controversies and debates? Have they changed? Are there things, issues that have been resolved or new problems that have come up in the past few years? How has the cost of living changed and what people need to do, how much people need to spend, how much people need to work to make it day by day? Has, that, has life become easier? Have economic pressures 
increased or decreased and, and in what ways, what kinds of economic pressures? Are there new careers that have appeared, maybe a new job that, that you're really excited about, that, that something that appeals to you for your future, or jobs that have disappeared? This might be something, for example, a, a parent or grandparent might have worked in a certain factory type of factory uh, and that jobs, the factory's closed down. That doesn't exist anymore. That might be something that some of you have experienced. How has the internet influenced politics? Before the internet, it was TV and the newspapers. So how has that changed the way we talk about politics and how we get information and how we, in fact, act politically? I mean, think about the rise of outsider politicians, people like Sarah Palin and Donald Trump, who aren't traditionally po po political. That is, they don't have a, a career. They didn't come from careers in politics. They didn't have training or education in those fields, but they were still elected and very popular amongst their supporters. International relations and trade. How are our relations with other foreign countries different than they were when you were a child? And war and global, global conflict. Many of you have probably lived a life where we've always been uh, involved in a war on terror. Do you think uh, that's increasing, decreasing? Do you think the world is getting safer, less safe? Do you think we're winning? Do you think we're creating more terrorists? Right? These are all subjects that you could talk about in terms of changes on the political and economic scale. And again, biggest big questions, are people more or less content than before? What are the biggest problems we now face? And is it easy to understand the issues of today? Is it, is it how do we even get a, get a hold of some of these problems? So we've gone through a number of topics and, and some specific ideas of uh, things you could look for in those topics. Some other things to consider, bigger things, broad, broad things to consider, no matter what specific issue you wanna talk about, what specific change you wanna talk about, uh, you can think about positive, negative, and neutral changes, right? Things that have changed for the better, things that have changed for the worse, or things that have just changed and not sure if it's better or worse. Um, so that's something you can consider all of those in your response. Uh, you should consider large and small scale changes, things that affect you individually and things that seem to affect the world or many people. And that uh, overlaps with things that you've witnessed yourself and things that you've only read about or heard about. I also want you to think about possible causes and the present day effects of these changes. That's something that you'll be writing about in the, in the piece. And finally, future consequences. What is this going to, to do for the future? How are, how are things going to continue to develop? What changes might we expect to come? Finally, I'll close with a suggested outline for how to organize your ideas uh, in writing this in this writing exercise about documenting change. You will begin, of course, with an introduction, uh, and in your introduction, you'll need to identify the topic, the thing that you're going to be talking about, whatever uh, object or phenomenon or situation has transformed. And you should also state or at least suggest your position, your attitude to whether this is a good thing, a bad thing, whether you're confused by it, am amused by it, angry about it, happy about it. And illustration and or restatement paragraphs, as we've talked about them in class, uh, are good way, are good uh, models for this, for this introduction. Um, they help you to explain or define, to describe a subject, a restatement paragraph, where you're uh, expressing an idea and then showing all the different aspects of it. Uh, and they also allow you to provide brief, striking examples of past or present um, changes as a way to launch into your topic. So these would be a good, good choices, either or, use both of them um, as a way to get started. For example, if I were to be writing about uh, the, the dating app issue, might start off with a restatement paragraph, something like this. Everyone is on a dating app these days. Women looking for a steady relationship, sign up for Bumble. Young people seeking casual relationships, sign up for Tinder, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually sort of, it could be in a restatement paragraph or uh, an, an illustration paragraph. It, it is providing um, examples of lots of different ones. But it's also going over an idea and uh, developing it. This this broad idea, everyone is on a dating app these days, but then it goes on to explore it in more detail. After your introduction, there'll be the first body part, uh, the first section of the paper, body A. Um, and here I'd like you, I think you could discuss the past and present. 
Um, and when I say body A, this isn't to indicate one paragraph, uh, it's section A. So there could be and, and should be multiple paragraphs. And in this part, you would provide evidence of the changes and show the similarities and differences between now and then. So the most appropriate form would be the compare contrast paragraphs that we talked about. So you'll need to determine what are the important aspects or qualities to compare. What is it about dating in particular that, that has changed because of dating apps? What specific things have changed in terms of uh, popular movies and the kinds of uh, stories that they tell? And this can also include positive and negative evaluation. Things have gotten better, things have gotten worse, uh, and, and any issue that's changed, there might be a mix of things that have gotten better and worse. So again, for example, uh, courtship is much more informal than it once was. When my father wanted to go out with my mother, he first had to get permission from her father. Nowadays, a high school kid may go through three different breakups before their parents even know they were dating someone. So I'm comparing past and present, uh, how things have changed in terms of dating. The issue of courtship is the specific aspect, and I provide an example of the past, and I contrast it with the present. Section B of the body, um, after you've talked about the past and the present and, and given evidence of the change, shown us the change, now I'd like you to explain the changes. Why have they happened? Explain the possible causes of these changes and also identify the current effects. What have these changes led to? So you'd have to think about uh, in terms of cause and effect, uh, it was it a chronological sequence where there key events or figures that were involved in making this transformation or in causing th this change? Uh, and were there multiple contributing factors? Were there many different things that went into the change? And what's their relative importance? So for example, uh, you might write again on the subject of the dating and dating apps. One, one reason for the rise of dating apps is probably our increasingly busy lives. After commuting to and from a 10 hour workday, running errands, cooking dinner, and all the other things we have to do on a daily basis, who has time or energy to get dolled up and go try to meet someone at a bar? So that's, that's the start of a paragraph discussing uh, a potential cause, right? And so then also same thing, talking about how these changes have affected present day. And finally, in your conclusion, uh, as you conclude the paper, the essay. Uh, this is where you'll assess and evaluate the changes overall. You might have been mentioning individual positive changes, individual negative changes throughout the course of the essay. Here you give your overall assessment and also predict possible future changes or consequences. What will happen uh, if this change continues to develop? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Um, and what remains unknown? So again, the cause effect paragraphs would be what you use here. They're, they provide that format for showing what is perhaps gonna happen in the future, whether that's good or bad, if this change continues on its current path. So for example, you might start a conclusion with something like, regardless of whether we like them or not, dating apps are likely going to remain a fixture in our social lives. For those too shy to introduce themselves to people in person, they may end up being a benefit. On the other hand, I thought, thought so, would go on to discuss possible negative uh, con uh, uh, consequences and ultimately give an assessment of and prediction of what's going to happen in the future overall. Just a few things to remember about this outline. It's really uh, just a suggested outline. There's multiple different ways you could organize the ideas, but I think this follows a logical progression. Also, as I said, multiple paragraphs per section or task. It's not necessarily one paragraph for the introduction, one paragraph to show, uh, to compare and contrast, one paragraph to show cause and effect. Uh, each, what you need to do is accomplish the task of showing it. And so there's probably gonna be multiple paragraphs because you'll be dealing with multiple differences. You'll be dealing with multiple causes and multiple effects. So it's useful to start with your own notes and outline, make an outline of what issues you want to talk about, what are the main aspects you want to compare, what are the main causes or consequences that you want to discuss, and write the introduction and conclusion last. Uh, you might start off with a very basic introduction um, and then go through, write the body, but then really return and, and rewrite the introduction and conclusion after you've written the body of the paper, because then you can tailor them to what you've actually written. And of course, finally, revise. That includes 
going back to look at what you've written before to make sure that, that there's a consistency and a coherency throughout the paper, that if you started off with a working thesis and then you've gone through and written the essay, that you go back and make sure your introduction matches what you've actually written. And of course, on the local level of just proofreading for typos, grammatical errors, et cetera, et cetera. And for those of you who are my students in my class, uh, and you'll be posting this online, of course, there'll be more details on Blackboard. Uh, but you'll also have to do peer responses, responding to some of your fellow classmates and their document, their uh, uh, ideas about how things have changed. So some possible response topics. Do your memories, or excuse me, do their memories or opinions of the subject match yours? In what way are they different? What might explain those differences? Do they, do they remember, uh, for example, uh, 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 school, how, for example, just what class was like, what school was like, do they remember it differently than you? Um, do you agree with their explanation of the causes or effects of the changes? Why or why not? If they think a certain thing is the cause for the rise in mass shootings, for example, do you think that's, that's correct? Uh, or do you think it's something else? Do you agree with their predictions of long-term consequences and future changes? Why or why not? And finally, do you agree with their overall attitude towards the subject and how it's changed? Do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing, or indifferent? So these are some of the, the ways that you might respond to uh, your classmates in their essays on documenting change. So that is the end. If you have questions, uh, there's my email. You know how to get in touch with me. You could also leave a comment on the video. Otherwise, um, I wish you a good day and I hope to see you in the next video or in class. Take care.